Hello, and welcome to Containment Breach, Three Minute Meets, which are never three minutes. I am your host, Christian DiMatteo, co-founder of Fugitive Poems, and we are talking today with another incredible indie creator from the Containment Breach series. And um, we were fortunate enough to get Mr. Patrick Hayes to write one of the stories in this book. Patrick, how are you doing? Very, very good. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. I'm so glad to see you and talk to you. Uh, Patrick, who the hell are you? My name is Patrick. It's Patrick Hayes. And I love to write. I was like writing. Ever since I can do it, I prefer, I just love writing so much. And uh, I love comic books to the max. Comic books are, I, I, it's an important medium. It's an important medium in a sense that you, you're able to tell stories in as little as eight pages. And, and you can get them and you, and you hit it hard. And, and that's how uh, I kind of like comics, like comics like that. And it's really an honor to be on something like this. Uh, I just am honored to be here. Love writing. I mean, yeah. Patrick, I love writing. That's fucking... <laughs> I, love, I think that's the best answer I've gotten. I, I, I feel the same way. My name is not Patrick, but I do love writing uh, yeah. as a fellow writer. And uh, you, you brought up a really interesting thing. There's an efficiency to comics. Um, but but you have to be able to do it. So you've got this benefit of the images helping you along, uh, but that doesn't make it easier. In some ways, it makes it harder. You've got to play the, this instrument with the rest of an orchestra, or at least as part of a, a two or three part band, and uh, and make the story pop. It's got to be awesome. It's got to be visually exciting. It's got to be interesting, and it also needs to be clear one of the things that drives me nuts is when i finish a short comic and i'm like well that was beautiful and but i have no idea what it was about so you got to be able to close it you got to be able to end it and uh uh it's a talent that you have what, where, what got you started when did you start writing i started writing uh i think maybe i was nine ten not uh, nine ten years old when i i really started thinking of stories to make and write down and uh my mother always prioritized reading, 100%. We used to go to a, a flea market, and it was video games and toys, 100%. And she was like, that's fine, but it's got to be books still. Okay. So I, I got some books, and I remember reading a series called Del Toro Quest, uh, old scholastic fantasy series. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, that that took hold of me right away. Especially fantasy shows like Hercules, Legendary Journeys, and Xena the Warrior Princess. Uh, uh, I moved toward sword and sorcery very quickly. And those kind of stories I wrote, stories I thought up, stuff I played, and uh, sci-fi after. It just I started finding books. I, I read like in a, like weird Harry Potter, but I didn't read them all. I read like four or five different ones for no reason. Uh, I just saw a Harry Potter book and I got it and I read it. And it's I just read when I can, whatever I can. Do you have any major touchstones from that time period? Uh. I read Killing Joke a little early. I shouldn't have read that as like a 13, 14 year old kid. I was like, oh man, this is kind of messed up. And then uh, I, I was able to find Savage Sword of Conan comic books Ooh. and uh, reprints in the in the Bodega comics by the, uh, you go to Bodega, you go to the gas station, a dollar fifty, they throw you some comic books. And I think my very first comics were Valiant comic books. What, what, what series? Bloodshot and Rye. And again, I shouldn't have. I'm I'm over here reading, and they're blowing people up. But I, I wasn't all that metal skateboarding. Exo Man of War was. Uh, I love Rye. I love Bloodshot. Exo Man of War is probably my favorite. Uh, Shadow. Um, great, great. I love Valiant. Was doing some incredible stuff. You said metal and skateboarding too. Yeah, yeah. I just like that kind of stuff. I like the kind of uh, shit. I, 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 metal, one hundred percent. But. 100 percent uh, yes, uh skateboarding uh did not work for me i was about to say <laughs> skateboarding did not take off for me but that's not true i did step on a skateboard and take off i never <laughs> <laughs> flying right out there i never mastered that but metal absolutely uh for me some of my touchstones are uh hobbit and lord of the rings um but also essential to me is the chronicles of narnia as a kid Ah, when I found the Chronicles of Narnia, I was like, oh, <laughs> mm. this is something we can do? Uh, all right. So they, they could be in your freaking closet. You could step through 
into an entire universe. So this, these are the rules we're playing with. Like I, I could lift up this dish at the dinner table, reach in and pull out somebody from. I'm in. If stories <laughs> can do this, absolutely. I'm in. Let's do this. So that was that was a big one for me. Uh, your gateway comic. Uh, you think it was the Conans or was it or was it the Killing Joke? Uh oh, a gateway into just comics general or wanting yeah. to make them. No, yeah. What oh, com comics general. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm being like unclear. <laughs> um, <laughs> comics in general, uh, definitely Valiant comic books. I love so many other comic books and so many other characters, but my heart belongs to Valiant comic books. Uh, there, there. I, I, the best book I've ever read is absolutely uh, Doctor Solar, Men of the Atom, as well as uh, Magnus. Those two books, I think, are the best books I've ever read. Yeah, that that series of EXO is yeah. the only fifty issues of comic book that have never been bad. I read those. Those are completely the best series of a comic book I've ever read. So, what was yeah. the one you said right before that? Before EXO? Uh, uh, Doctor Solar and Magnus. Yes. Yeah, Magnus. Yeah. I, yeah, Magnus, those company. gold key characters were ahead of their time. They were absolutely, there were 60s characters, and those books are not hokey to read today. They're phenomenal books. Absolutely. 100%. I have deep love in my heart for Valiant Comics. Um, what got you writing comics? I read, I read, what was it? There, there was a, uh, uh, oh, yes, I read Peter David's Aquaman. And that was kind of the, like, I read a couple of issues that, that was kind of the first book I read that was like a superhero book that kind of seemed different. Like I expected Spider-Man and I, and I, I expected kind of Batman, not, oh, not expected, expected, but when I read them, what I was told about these guys book. showed up. I was like, okay. When I read uh, Aquaman for the first time, I was like, oh shit. Like this, this is not like Spider-Man, Batman or X-Men or something like that. This book is completely different. And it kind of showed me that it can be different. And then, then I was like, I, I, want to do some of these i want to make some of these because I, I never ever would want i don't know i wouldn't want to write spider-man that scares me i i'd rather just find out what peter's doing that's my guy but uh, uh uh when i saw something like that i was like oh i'd love to see that kind of stuff peter david uh is actually essential to me as well he was one of the first comic writers i started seeking out um when i was reading when i was when i started getting into comics I I wanted to be an artist, uh, and that uh, was not to be. Uh, <laughs> I don't have anything necessary to be an artist, uh, but I felt something with the writers as well, and I started following. So at first, I was following artists. You know, whatever Todd McFarlane or Eric Larson drew, I was there. Uh, uh, Mark Bagley, I was there. You know, uh, Martin uh, Matt Teixeira, I was there. But I started following writers too. There were some stories that would like affect me, and I was I was like, "Wait, who is this?" And Peter David was one of the early ones that I was like, "This." And it's funny because I've never read Aquaman. I've never read Peter David's Aquaman. I don't think I even knew about it until right now. But you said mm -hmm. Peter David, and I don't even need to know to, to that Aquaman to know it was definitely a cut above. He had a he had a voice. He had a voice in his characters, their voice, but there was an extra level of empathy and humanity to it there was an extra level of reality in the unreality and there was also a spectacle he managed to put those things all together where so many writers are either well no i write really real superhero stories or i write real spectacles they're wild peter david managed to do all of it and when something happened to a character it freaking mattered Yes. And I started following Peter David around. It was like, you know, you weren't just like, oh, no, will he survive? I'll read next month. You were like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I have to uh, I have to finally read them. I have the novelizations of the movie Spider-Man 1 and 2 by Peter David. And I'm like, he novelized Spider-Man 1? I read that all day. I uh, didn't know that. I have uh, uh, some of his Star Trek books. Yeah, I oh. Uh, uh, Star Trek Ismati is one of my favorite books ever because uh, uh, I really love Riker and Deanna Troy. Yeah. And but it, it, uh, Imzadi, Imzadi is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. I, the guy, the guy is an incredible writer. Um, so you take these talents and then you bring them to the Containment Breach series. So Containment Breach, uh, every book has its own umbrella theme. And this one was of clouds and ether. And I wanted to, I actually almost called it 
Musica Universalis, but I didn't want everyone writing stories about the concept of Musica Universalis because it's actually a specific concept. I was on, almost going to put it in there as a very, as, as think about the philosophy of the stars. And I went, you know what, if I write Musica Universalis, everyone's going to write stories about that specific concept, which happens to be one of my favorites. And Andres Brianos, Andres Briano, sorry, did write with Yu Feng as the artist and Tom Line as a letter, a story called Musica Universalis, which I was so excited. Uh, and he did a great job with it. But I decided to call this with Clouds and Ether because I felt like there were so many. You can you can go from Mobius to Clive Barker uh, with that. And uh, and uh, I wanted to see what people would do. And you you showed up with an amazing cyberpunk story. Can you tell me a little something about that? So uh, uh, Chase Bishop, who I was uh, uh, paired with, I what I learned from like Frank Miller and uh, uh, Roy Thomas and, and and Stanley and all and all, all those guys who worked with these artists so like bullpen heavy is that you 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 know you ask the artist what he wants at least or what they want at least because you wanna you're working with somebody. And I know immediately that's the first thing if you want to make a comic book. It's the first thing you have to realize you're working with somebody else. Uh, and it's a, a collaboration to the fullest. And so I asked Chase, what do you want to draw? And at first he was like, what do you mean? But I was like, what, what, what do you feel like drawing at the moment? And he's been feeling cyberpunk. So immediately I was like, okay. Awesome. And then uh, I came up with the concept of the story on that and then gave it to him. I, I, I got the concept from him though. I try. I tried it so that when he's drawing it, he can he can feel it. I feel like when we when we follow our favorite artists as well, and uh, not to call an artist out, but you see someone like John Romita Jr. Now, when he he draw he drew Superman, it was it was okay. He, he he was he was being a comic artist, but when he drew Kick Ass again, it was for some reason it was way better, and it's like he cared about what he was doing because Kick Ass is his. He co co created it. And so it, it, the art was phenomenal on that. But then everyone's like, why is Superman? So whatever. But he cared about the project. And if he wants to, yeah, uh, if Chase was want to draw this and really get creative with it, which he did, there's two, there's a panel in here where I'm like, damn, I didn't think he was going to do that. And that is crazy. I don't even know what thinking. And he brought it to life in a crazy way. And I think that's because he wanted to draw cyberpunk. And so no matter what, the story had to be something he wanted to draw. Absolutely. I, I love it. I love hearing that too. Uh, and you guys work together phenomenally. I, by the way, at Terrificon in 2022, I got to meet John Romita Jr., uh, which oh. was a, was a moment for me. John Romita Jr.'s Punisher is uh, is one of the one of the essential stones in my foundation, in my creative writing comic foundation. Is John Romita Jr.'s Frank Castle uh, oh. that that knows. I always say first that flat, that amazing flat nose that he's got the look, the feel of him, the body that he gave his Punisher is the Punisher that makes this slim, defined muscle Punisher. And that's no Punisher is a brick shit house to me. And yeah, John yeah. Romita Jr. He got that. Yeah. He's not Luke Cage. He's not the Hulk. No, he's a man. He's a dude. But he's a brick shit house. And exactly. that and and you see that face, it's scarier than the skull. Uh, you know you're stern, not walking away from that. Bastard. And so I got to tell him that he was such a uh, influence on me, uh, and how important that was. And that was and what a, what a cool thing is when you get to do that. But I got to tell you what you're saying about you and Chase. Um, absolutely, Chase came with out and I just knocked it out, knocked it out of the park. He came out of nowhere because I, I, we wanted him on the project because we love his stuff. But none of his stuff was that. And I don't mean talent level. I mean that genre. None of that stuff was cyberpunk. And so when that showed up, we were like, oh, oh well, we made the right choice getting Chase on. We knew we were happy with his art anyway, but hadn't seen this. And the, you, you, you're 100% right because there is a passion there. There's an absolute passion in that art. Uh, and uh, the last panel, uh, there's a bunch of great panels, bunch. I mean, the whole thing's awesome. And I actually think I might know which one you're thinking of. The last panel 
shows you that he created an orchestra movement with the art, which he could only have done working with you on the other instruments. And it is, sure. this is a, your story is almost orchestral. You know, and there's a, there's a slow, quiet beginning, and then it starts to build, and then there's this explosion where the strings give way to the to the to the to the uh, to the horns, and it gets intense and wild, and then it comes down suddenly, but it comes down not as a sudden drop; it comes down with another bump, and then the symbols sort of everything tempers out with the symbols and it, that's that last i don't know why i always hear orchestra when i look at your story that's that last panel is the, the symbols just go, going quiet coming down and going quiet because it is there in that moment that all of it mattered that that entire trip mattered and he nailed that last panel um and i love the story i love fading uh, and folks, you're going to absolutely be taken with it. And uh, uh, and uh, um, what was the other thing I wanted to say? And uh, Kyler, uh, Ky uh, Kyler Merrill did the lettering on it and did a tremendous job. Patrick he did actually uh, uh, for, for, to, to mention that for for Kyler that uh, there were there were dialogue boxes that I didn't put like on certain panels, but Kyler put them on different on different panels, and I was like, that's much better. And he he did he he's he read it and that's how he saw it and I was like oh I didn't even have it there at all awesome and I also uh, love I the, the, the the caption boxes have these little slashes missing from them yes yes before. I was like all right I'm in a exactly because again uh, 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 that's his creative input where it's a cyberpunk story so the caption box yeah matches its story exactly yeah um, love it. Love it. And, and this is what I'm talking about, though. And this is why we do what we do with Containment Bridge is we put artists together, creatives together who have never worked together before because you get these teams. I can't tell you how many teams we've had who never worked together before go on to work on other projects and even get contracts. And they, they, they've they kept we've got a team uh, uh, from volume uh, two, uh, Jeff. Um, oh, my God, Jeff Morant and Pierre Rosé who uh, had so much fun. They'd never met or heard of each other. They had so much fun working on their story in volume two that they've gone on to, I think, two other projects now, uh, which is awesome. And this is what we love to hear. Uh, I, I got, Patrick, I love your writing. I'm such a fan of it. Where can we go? Where should we be looking for Patrick Hayes? Where do we go to find more Patrick Hayes? With uh, social at, the moment, media. at the moment, nowhere. At the, social at, media. Uh, uh, oh, to, to see me? Uh, at the moment, nowhere. Uh, it's 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 something I really enjoy uh, doing, and I really enjoy it for myself. And Container Bridge is actually my kind of first step into wanting to do so, because I, I did it for me. I did it for me, and uh, I just love doing it. But when you asked me to, uh, when we, we met and we talked about it, and asked me wanted to be in there and see if I could uh, apply to do so, I was like, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, so folks, you're going to read Containment Bridge Volume Four. And you're going to read the story Fading by Patrick Hayes, Chase Bishop, and Kyler Merrill. And uh, a bunch of you out there are going to want to want, want to want, let's try that again, want Patrick to write for you. So since Patrick is being an online hermit, what you're going to do is you're going to contact me, go to FugitivePoems.com, reach out to me, go to at Fugitive Poems on Twitter, reach out to me, and tell me, can you... Can you take the long journey into the wastelands and with a lantern check every cave? Because we'd like to work with Patrick and we can't get in touch with him. So that, and I'm going to do that because I believe in Patrick so much. I will take, I'll put on a cloak. I'll walk with it. With, <laughs> I will find him somewhere uh, bent over a fire, eating a squirrel. I'm like somebody wants you to write again, Patrick. <laughs> You know, I, so, I, I'm so hermity. It's ridiculous. Ugh. Folks, come to me and I'll get you Patrick because you want me to get you Patrick. Patrick, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm thank Christian you, you, DeMatteo. You can find me at CDMETC on Twitter, at Fugitive Poems on Twitter, at Fugitive Poems on Instagram, FugitivePoems.com. Go there. Buy Containment Breach Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. Press that Kickstarter button. If the Kickstarter is still going on, you want Containment Breach Volume 4. 
And in fact, if you do that, you get the best deal on getting all four containment bridges on the legacy tier if you haven't done gotten all of them yet. If the if the Kickstarter is over already, if we've already funded, then get on FugitivePoems.com and order from us there because you're going to want these books and you got incredible creatives like Patrick in this and the stories are unbelievable. Patrick, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, man. Absolutely. We're Fugitive Pumps, but we make comics.